Hello, I'm Julia Fisher. Welcome to The Olive Tree, the programme that brings you the stories of believers living in Israel today, both Jews and Palestinians. Today we hear more from Zev Porat. Born into an ultra-religious Jewish family, he was expected to become a rabbi. But he didn't. Instead, he shocked his family by becoming a believer in Jesus or Yeshua. As a result, his family cut him off. He lost his job, and he and his wife ended up living on the beach in Tel Aviv. Listen now as Zev explains how all these calamities happened. I was working for a, a company uh, called Granaflex in the city of Herzliya. I was a sales manager. I managed 37 workers. I always had three or four times the salary, uh, the average wage. I had a new car every year. Everything was paid for. And one day, it was about a year, 11 months after I was a believer, I got called in the office by the CEO. He asked me, he said, Zev, I've been hearing things about you. And I asked him what kind of things. And he says, you've been talking about he didn't say Yeshua, he used the other word, which is like a rabbinic curse. I, didn't, I even don't want to say that here, which means uh, Jesus. I said, but I don't share Yeshua at work. I talk about Yeshua after work. And he says, I don't care, I won't have it, I won't allow it. You're going to turn this place into a cult. Come back in the morning and speak with me. And I said, you know, if they speak about football or basketball after work, what's the difference? They say, I don't want it, I won't have it, you're brainwashing people. So I walk into this office the next morning, And he looks at me and he says, what's it going to be? And I asked him, are you asking me to deny the Lord Yeshua? And he says, yes, I am. I said, I will never deny the Lord Yeshua. And he terminated 14 and a half years of work like that. And you know, I was a new believer just under two years. I was angry. I was upset. I wanted to get this guy. I went back to the office. He had told me to clear my desk, return my car keys. My colleagues all said, you know, it's not legal what he did. He can't do this. And they were right. And you can go to the labor courts and sue him. And I was going to do that. But when I went home, very upset, I got in my room and I started to pray to God. And God revealed the scripture to me. Vengeance is mine. And I understood right there that not only is God telling me not to do anything to this man, but also pray for his salvation. And that's what happened. From that period on, I went through another 26 months of severe persecution. Did you ever reach the point where you just felt this is just too costly, this is just too hard? You know, many times I felt that, but praying to God, the Holy Spirit just revealed to me that to have faith in Yeshua, Yeshua will bless you. You know, and I I knew the verses, blessed are those who are persecuted for my name's sake. And after years of studying in the yeshiva, years of studying the rabbinic interpretations about the Bible, I finally read the Word of God for exactly what it is, the Word of God, without any interpretations. And the Holy Spirit just spoke to me and spoke to me and encouraged me. And that's what kept me real strong. And also my fire to go out and share Yeshua is what kept me strong too as well. And I just knew that I'm in a period of time right now where I'm going through the fire, but I just know God's going to bless me. I don't know how. Did your wife stick with you during this time? Well, I remember uh, arriving to the beach in Tel Aviv. My wife asked me a question. She said, doesn't the Bible say that God will take care of us? Doesn't the Bible say that God will bless us? Why are we here in the beach? What happened? Lynn, I, I don't know. But I do know that God is not the author of evil, but he can allow it. And I do know that if we put our faith in Yeshua, no matter what happens to us, we have victory in Yeshua. He's already beat the devil. And if we continue our way in faith, God will bless us. And that's what kept us. We ended up being on a beach for three and a half months. It was hard taking cold showers at night. And uh, in Tel Aviv on the beaches, you know, who goes there at 2 o'clock in the morning? It's drug addicts, prostitutes, drunkies. So it's not a very safe place to sleep. I slept and she did guard duty. In three hours she slept and I did guard duty. It was very difficult. One day you went to the garden tomb in Jerusalem, probably one of the lowest points at this time in your life. Well, before that, I remember um, God speaking to me through the Holy Spirit, telling me that I'm not sharing the gospel anymore. And I started to negotiate with God. I said, look, I've been on the beach for three and a half months. I've been working as a dishwasher. I'm not in the condition to do anything like this. And God said, I never told you to share the gospel when you're living in a penthouse. You share the gospel in season and out. And this is when I understood that I need to go share the gospel, and I did. My mom is the only one in the family who has some kind of a contact with me. You know, no matter how much she was angry and upset at me that I believe in Yeshua, 
she still loved me as a mom. And I remember she always looked forward to Friday night, Yom Shishi, for me calling and saying Shabbat Shalom, you know, have a happy Sabbath. And I didn't do that in the period of time that I was on the beach. And one day I called her and I told her what happened. You would think a mother would be upset, but she was happy. She said, you know, I warned you about this, Zev. I told you if you believe in this Yeshua, you will lose everything. You've lost your family. You've lost your friends. You've lost your job. You've lost your home. Look what you've done. And I said, God will bless me. And she said, what kind of a blessing is this? And she closed the phone in my face. Two days later, 12 o'clock at night, seven Orthodox Jews came to my tent. I was sure they came to break my legs. But they walked up to the tent and they said, Zev, we're not here to fight with you. You have made a mistake. We forgive you. You need to be a rabbi like your family. You come with us. We'll get you cleaned up. We'll put you back in the yeshiva. You know what? We'll even get your old job back if you want it. And they pull out a check. It was equivalent at that time to about 25, 26,000 American dollars. And I looked at them and I said, may God bless you, but I will never deny the Lord Yeshua. And they spit on me and they cursed our savior and they left. The next day I started to preach the gospel on the beach. And as I was reading Psalms 2 with a man, out of nowhere this man punches me. I was knocked on the floor and a lot of young people around there in their early 20s thought I was attacking this man. So they came over and they started to kick me and punch me. Three minutes later, the police came. They handcuffed my legs and my hands. I tried to explain to the police officer that I was attacked for sharing the Tanakh. And he asked this man, did you hit him because he shared the Tanakh? And the man said, yes, I did. He's a traitor. Get him out of here. So he said, I'd like you to come down to the police station and file a complaint against this man. He's admitted to assaulting you. And I, I looked at the police officer and I said, you know, he doesn't know what he's doing. God forgives him and I forgive him. The police officer said, Michigan, which means basically crazy opened the handcuffs, let me go, and it was amazing because, you know, here in Israel when something happens, a lot of people just like to, out of curiosity, stand around and look. There were a lot of people there, and they heard this, including the ones who assaulted me. They were speechless, and it was like a wonderful testimony. But now I had a different problem. I'm a Messianic Jew. I'm living on the beach. I'm married to a Gentile. I'm working as a dishwasher, and I have a black eye. How do you look for a job? Uh, that's when I ended up going to the Garden of Two, and the question you asked me, that's where I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit, and I used to go there to pray. And I was sitting one day there in the Garden of Tomb, crying, reading my Bible and just weeping. Um, I just felt that I can't take it anymore. And um, a man by the name of Alan walked up to me, and he said, Are you a Messianic Jew? And I said, Yes, I am. He said, The Holy Spirit told me to come and speak with you and pray with you. And I told him my story, and we prayed together, and we cried together. He said, God is going to bless you. And I can tell you it was a Thursday. From that Monday, God poured eight days of supernatural blessings on me. One blessing after another. One telephone call after another. It was amazing. The first phone call I received was from a bank in Israel. And they said, Mr. Porat, there's an insurance company looking for you. Can we give them your phone number? And I said, sure. What else can be done to me in this situation? The same day, 4.30 p.m., I received a phone call from this insurance company. And they said, Mr. Port, we have a check for you for 11,000 American dollars. And I knew I didn't deserve that check. I knew where it came from. I ran down to that insurance company. And you know, the Bible talks about the favor of the non-believer being upon you. That favor was upon me. And somehow they managed to get the CEO to sign that check real fast. It was already 6 p.m. The banks closed at 6.30. And I can tell you right now, I just went in there. I withdrew that money so fast. I called my wife, Lynn. I said, Lynn, meet me at Remax in Ramad Gan, the real estate agency. We're taking a hot shower tonight. And two minutes to seven, I arrived to Remax, and I said, I'm looking for a place to live. I need a vacant place. I don't care about the size. And the guy says, you know, it's 7 p.m. Come back in the morning. I said, look, I've been on the beach for three and a half months. I don't want to come back in the morning. And again, the favor of the non-believer was upon me. It's the first place he took us to was Der HaShalom, which is that road right there. It's called the Road of Peace. Interesting, it was number 50, which you know what 50 represents, the year of Jubilee. And he says, you know, it's not very big. It's about 22 meters. I said, is it empty? He said, yes. I said, can I pay three months? Is that enough? He said, yes. I said, how do I sign a contract? He said, well, the landowner is not here, but I do the contract. I said, okay, I'll take it. He says, but you haven't seen it. I said, when you've been on a beach for three and a half months, you'll take it too. 
And he says, I've been a real estate agent for 17 years. This is the fastest business deal I've ever made. We went to the office and we, we signed the contract. We slept in that. It wasn't, wasn't anything in that house. It was just a mattress on the floor right in the middle of the house. And um, it was like a mansion for us. And the next day, another telephone call, another blessing. My wife, Lynn, received a phone call from one of her previous uh, employees. She uh, cooks. She was making banquets for them. And it wasn't even the family. It was the father of the family. He was leaving the United States. And he left her $13,000. So praise God, what the Pharisees wanted to give us a week ago, God gave us. It was amazing. I remember that me and my wife received confirmation from the Holy Spirit. We both woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning. We turned to each other. We had the same dream. God said that that money is his. You need to go sow a seed. So we took 10% of all that money and we sowed it in the Garden of Tomb. And then another phone call. This time it was from one of the jobs that I was looking for 11 months ago. I said, Mr. Port, are you looking for a job? And I said, yes, I am. We want to hire you. It was Misrada Bitajon, which is the, uh, it's the army. It was a very high paying job too. And I just went, I got a job too. So God gave us a place to live, finances and a job in a few days. Next phone call I received from a Messianic leader here in Israel. He was in a conference in Jerusalem. He met that guy, Alan. He told him about me. And he said, I want to invite you to my congregation. So from that congregation, I visit another 160 congregations in Israel. And praise God, I'm, I'm right now in Tiferet Yeshua, where God wants me to be. And where really I feel uh, at home and uh, as a family. And uh, this is uh, how God brought me from being an uh, Orthodox Jew in the dark to the light of Yeshua. Zev Porat sharing his story. And we'll hear more of Zev's story on next week's program when he describes what he's doing now to share his faith in Jesus with his fellow Israelis. You're listening to The Olive Tree with me, Julia Fisher. Having heard Zev's story, you may be wondering if there's a way you can help him. Well, the Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund is a charity based in the UK that supports work amongst both Jews and Arabs. If you would like to send a donation or receive our free bi-monthly newsletter, please either visit our website, www.olivetreefund.org, where you will also find information, articles and news about our tours, or write to me, Julia Fisher, at the Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund, P.O. Box 850, Horsham, RH12 9GA in the UK. Meanwhile, I'll be back at the same time next week for another story from the Olive Tree. Until then, goodbye.